If you want joy, joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come to your heart. If you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come to your heart. Your sins he'll wash away, your night he'll turn to day, your life he'll make it over anew. If you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart. pretty good case could be made these days that there's not a whole lot of joy around. Uh, dear ones, loved ones, friends, people we know, people we've heard of, uh, lots of them fighting terrible, tragic illnesses right now. And uh, economically, I mean, there's many people that are out of work. Um, and, and that's kind of scary when the bills go on, but the income does not. It's a frightening moment, and, and so into the midst of that, is it really realistic for us to think that we could have genuine joy? I understand you put a plastic smile on and fool most everybody, but it's uh, when you're by yourself and there's nobody around, and the enormity of what all is going on begins to dawn on us somewhere deep inside that uh, yeah, maybe not a whole lot of joy at that moment. But you know, I believe there could be. I believe there can be if we'll figure out a, a, a way to live life God's way. Nehemiah 8.10, a uh, marvelous uh, verse of scripture. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. And he presents that in a very difficult and awkward time. And nothing was going right. And, and somebody had just discovered the book of the law. And it's dawning on them that they have put themselves in a, a, a position of judgment with God. And so obviously then great repentance is going to be necessary. And yet into the midst of those awkward and tough circumstances, the, the prophet, the leader, one, one who knows God looks him in the eye and says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. And he gives it as a command, Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. I don't presume to tell you what to do, but maybe I could make a suggestion. Let's, let's take this as God's word for us in these awkward and tough times. Just do kind of like my dear friend Willa. Willa Neal, some of you knew her, some didn't. Uh, what, a, what a giant in the faith, what a giant in our church, what a lady of faith and joy as the end of her life approached several years ago, mid-90s, uh, she was in her mid-90s and lots of health issues and stuff, and it was evident that she was folding her tent, and right in the midst of that, if you walked in and said, hi Willa, how are you doing, instead of getting an organ recital, of what all's wrong, and, and this organ is bad, and that one's dying, and all of that stuff. I mean, she could have said all of that, and everybody would have understood. But instead, I can just hear her sweet old voice cracking, and she would say, You know, God is so good to me, and I just love Him so much, and I feel His presence. And she would go on, you know, with a laundry list of the stuff that she had to be joyful about. I mean, as she lay dying, and she knew that. But somehow, somehow she'd made a choice. You know, I'm going to change the way I see things. That's kind of what Second uh, Timothy 1.7 is talking about. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. That word sound there is having to do with discipline, to be able to say, yeah, I'm not going to think that way, I'm going to think this way. 
And I believe that's what Nehemiah is trying to tell us. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So how about let's take a big sip out of that jug today and let the joy of the Lord flood our hearts. Be encouraged. I know you're going through a difficult time. Some of you, it just almost boggles the mind, the tough times that have hit your home. But I do believe that God loves you and cares about you. And if you'll just look to him, he'll restore your joy and he'll make a way where there doesn't seem to be any way.